you for having me here to give a short talk. Uh, the theme of our activity is starting points, and for something uh, as complex as the South China Sea disputes, I think it's by quite fitting that we start with something, something I hope will be uh, um, quite uh, relevant to each one of us. The titles are Common Future in the South China Sea, and interestingly, right now, because of the disputes, it seems like that future is becoming less and less common and more and more exclusive. Now, why is it like that? Well, really, it's not because of oil, it's not because of military uh, advantages, really, but most fundamentally, it's about this. It's about fish, okay? Uh, the South China Sea is actually precipitated by a problem with fish rather than anything else. All the other, other activities, military, uh, oil and gas, etc., they tend to be much less of a problem, but it's the fishing uh, that really tends to be the spark of some, something really, really big. So, for example, uh, in the, in, throughout the 1970s, there have been two armed clashes in the South China Sea between Vietnam and China. One in the Paracels, another one in uh, Johnson South Reef. And in both instances, the run-up to it, the, uh, the precipitator, is really an argument between fishermen. In our case, the event symbolized by this sculpture, how timely, uh, Scarborough Shoal in 2012, notice what did it start with? The Philippine Navy trying to arrest Chinese fishermen. So it's really about the fish. And that's something that most people don't seem to, to appreciate because they tend to think all in other terms, such, such as military terms or uh, oil and gas. Every time we, we say South China Sea in the papers, there's always that ab adjective, oil-rich South China Sea. No? But that's not really what's sparking off uh, the problems most of the time. Now, for us Filipinos, fish, you know, fish, fishing, that's so familiar. Why? Because we live with fish, we eat fish so much, no? I've been to several other countries um, many times, and there, uh, there are quite a lot of them where if you, you go to dinner, have lunch, you'll not see a fish. Or whatever fish that they have is probably the same kind of fish that they use for every other dish. Literally, we have such a, di a variety and, and diversity of, of fish to eat, no? compared to, say, in the United States or in Canada, where, where everything is either a pollock or a haddock or a, or a dory. No? Uh, dory, the cream dory, not, not dory. Okay. <laughs> so in the Philippines, of course, we, we expect to, have to take our fish from Philippine waters. And everybody, especially in the past couple of years, has gained such a, a different awareness of these uh, Philippine waters and how important they are. Prior to, the, to, say, 2009, 2010, most people were really focused on the land. You know? Everything that they knew was about the land, and few people actually gave importance to the waters of our archipelago. But thankfully, since that time, a lot of our people, both in government and in the, and in the wider public, have gained a much, much greater appreciation for these waters. And here I'm showing you, actually, uh, what these waters are under international law. Now, the West Philippine Sea, which has become so ingrained in our consciousness in the past couple of years, is actually this little portion here. No? Not the entire South China Sea, I had to point out to, to, to Jigo that these two are not synonymous. So when you talk about the West Philippine Sea disputes, we're using that term to identify that part of the South China Sea, which we claim to be ours. Okay? And why is it important, again, fish? If you look at the fishing activity that has been taking place in this country for at least the past couple of years, no? and thankfully we can see that now more vividly through satellite data, you'll notice that, for example, in the middle of the archipelago, those are archipelagic waters, are inter-island waters. That's where most of the Philippine fishing activity actually takes place. And much of the fish that we eat comes from there. But a good portion also comes from the West Philippine Sea. Now, the West Philippine Sea, however, as you mentioned, is only part of something bigger, and that's the South China Sea. Not the South China Sea that China is claiming, but something more than that, extending out onto the edges of the Gulf of Thailand and right up there uh, nearly around Taiwan. Okay. The South China Sea is so big that uh, it, ha and it has so much, so much resources that actually all of the surrounding countries get their fish from that same place. So it's not just us, it's everyone else. And the thing that most people don't realize is that fish move. 
they don't stay in any one place. And here, what you see here from satellite data is the movement of plankton, the base of the food chain, where the plankton go, the fish will follow. And where the fish go, the fishermen will. This is actually a series of images taken over the course of one year in 2010. So every month, uh, if, if that's one shot, or one photograph, or one, one image, rather, of the distribution of plankton. No, and I've gotten only one image per month, but just from that, you can see how the water circulates, how the plankton circulates, more or less here in a counterclockwise motion. So you realize that really, whatever fish we catch actually comes from somewhere else, and those that we don't catch go somewhere else. And that is the crux of the problem. The South, the South China Sea really is a common resource. It's a common pool resource. And this is uh, going to be uh, a, a big part of what we need to, to realize no? and uh, in order for us to come up with a solution to the problems that we face. Okay. Again, if we look at that image I showed you earlier about fishing, uh, the fishing activity, look this time at the left side of that image and you'll notice how much more fishing has been going on, especially since 2012. The other thing you probably will notice is that a lot of that fishing has been increasingly coming closer and closer to our shores. Other statistics gathered by scientists elsewhere, we, we commonly uh, consult uh, with, with, this, uh, with these scientists in order to, to appreciate uh, marine policy issues. Some of them have tried to put together the catch uh, data from this region and adjusted them based on certain uh, information. And you look here in this particular um, chart, this is the catch since 1950, going up to around uh, 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And each one of these colors represent a type of fish that is being uh, harvested. And you'll notice that what does this uh, rep uh, chart represent? all types of fish are being caught or fished out of the South China Sea. No? And it has been increasing at such a massive uh, uh, rate, especially since the 1990s. We've gone from, um, the region has gone from catching about 1 million tons in 1950 to about 14 to 15 million tons just last year. That's over 100 million tons in the past of, uh, few decades. Okay. If we then look at who is catching the fish. Here you see the Philippines in light green, that's us. And that's everybody else. Particularly this is Thailand and China. That's Malaysia, and then some of the other smaller countries. So you see that with this increasing fish catch, we have not been actually increasing our fishing effort in that area, everyone else has. And if we take a look again at the, a, different a different type kind of presentation of data, this is actually uh, photographs of lights at night that have been uh, averaged out. So this each is equivalent to a year's worth of, of uh, location of, of lights. Each light represents a fishing vessel, and therefore you can get a sense of the fishing activity for that entire year. And if you look at that series since 2012, what you'll notice really is that fishing activity, especially from the western side, that would be China, Vietnam, and Thailand, have been moving closer and closer to us. And basically, they've also been fishing more and more of the West Philippine Sea. And that is really now the, the, the challenge before us. Okay. Um, everyone uh, around the region needs food. We need it as much as they do. And yet, because of this, this need, no, it, is driving, it is driving the exploitation of the South China Sea at a far greater rate than ever before. And we are now seeing the manifestation of that dispute in things like the West Philippine Sea case, the uh, Chinese uh, incursions into our waters, the artificial islands, all of this. The question that we need to start with is, what do we want to do with it? How do we want to do it? Do we do it by trying to be exclusive, trying to claim these waters only as our own, trying to keep everyone out? Or do we do it by trying to look at 
different cooperative solutions, trying to recognize that this is a common resource that we all share, and trying to work together to try to manage and make them sustainable. The reason why this is most important is that if we look at who has been catching these, these uh, fish, this subdivision that represents different sectors, most of the fish are being caught by this group. It is the industrial sector. Meanwhile, everyone else, the small fishermen, the artisanal fishermen as we call it, have only been catching this. And people who have been, who are, have been classified as subsistence fishermen are only this. And so, while everybody else has been catching more and more of the fish, actually, the people who are most, more dependent on them you know, have been unable to keep up. At the same time, because we've been catching all of the, the, the fish and the exploitation rates have been increasing, this is, I mean, these two charts um, are, are a kind of, of warning signal. The first one shows us that from the 1950s, when only that small portion, about 20% of the South China Sea, was actually being exploited, we've gone to nearly, what, 99%. And a good portion, about 5, five to 7%, are now already in a state of a collapse. Another look at that data also shows that in terms of each particular kind of fish, whether it's crustaceans or, or uh, tunas or pelagics as we call them, bottom dwellers or the swimmers, no? they're all also being exploited because as we saw earlier, we are taking all kinds of fish, all of the kinds of fish that, we can find, that is found in the South China Sea. And what we're seeing here is a huge uh, a, a trend of it of the exploitation peaking and beginning now to taper off and possibly go down. That is the signal in other places. This pattern has been seen before. It is the signal of the beginning of a collapse. So thank you very much. I hope that with that kind of information, you can, you can now have a very different perspective about what this represents. And this is the South China Sea disputes. Thank you very much. Thank you.